Welcome to this video overview of Nexus Management in SureTax. In this tutorial, we will cover how to add, view, edit, and deactivate Nexus jurisdictions. There are multiple ways to manage Nexus jurisdictions in SureTax. One way is by going through the menu. Nexus Management is listed here under Configuration. We'll come back to that, but for now I will stay on the dashboard. The dashboard map can be toggled between the US and Canada, and has several different views available on the left sidebar. Let's have a look at the Nexus view. This map shows all active Nexus jurisdictions by state, as well as which states don't have any Nexus jurisdictions activated. The key on the right tells us that green means all jurisdictions in a state are active, whereas orange means that one or more are active, and gray means that none are active. There are two other colors in the key, blue and purple, which pertain to economic nexus, which will be covered in another video. For now, let's walk through the process of adding active nexus jurisdictions, for a state that doesn't have any active, currently. To do that, we start at the top of the screen by clicking the Add button. Then in the drop-down, we select Nexus. This opens the Add Nexus dialog. At the top we can see that the Nexus ID has been auto-populated, but that can be edited. After entering my new Nexus ID, I'll save it by clicking the check mark. Then from the Sourcing Override drop-down, we select from Sales, Use, or Default. Some states do have a default here, so I'll select that. Here we can also choose the effective date and the end date. The effective date is by default today's date. I'll leave those as they are. Next I will select the state, which I can do by choosing it from the drop-down, or by entering the first few letters, and either completing the state name, or selecting it from the filtered results. In this case, I'll be adding Nexus jurisdictions for Iowa. Here we can select whether to turn on all Nexus jurisdictions for the state, or just some. For this example I'll choose to turn some on, so that we can look at how those jurisdictions are selected. Making that selection opens a list of possible jurisdictions grouped by county, except for the three options at the top. The FCC, the IRS, and the state of Iowa. I want to activate jurisdictions in Butler County. So let's say I select the checkbox for Butler. Then I click the drop down to display those jurisdictions. This shows me that I have selected all available city jurisdictions for Butler County. Right now, however, I want to select jurisdictions for another county. Let's say Decatur. And I don't want to automatically include all of the cities available. So having located Decatur, I can expand it to see the list of cities. In this section, I can individually select the cities that I want to include. Having done that, I could continue down the list and add any further jurisdictions. But in this case, there are no further new jurisdictions to add for Iowa. I'll click Save to commit my changes, and we can review the map again. We can see at the top of the screen a message that my Nexus was successfully created. And now we can see that Iowa has turned from gray to orange, indicating that it has more than one but not all jurisdictions active. Iowa now has 14 active jurisdictions. Clicking on Iowa on the map, focuses the map details section below on the state of Iowa. We can see the jurisdictions here grouped by county, similar to how they were organized in the Add a Nexus dialog, but each city has a card displaying Nexus jurisdiction details for that city. And, as with the Add dialog, the counties are grouped accordion style, and can be expanded or collapsed to display the city jurisdictions within them. So, now we know how to quickly view all active Nexus jurisdictions for a state. But maybe I want to work with Nexus jurisdictions generally. I can do that here, by clicking Manage All Nexus in the Map Details section. This takes us to the Nexus Management screen, which is the same location that you can reach by clicking Nexus Management from the menu, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Now we're back at the country level, and the cards in the Map Detail section show states, rather than counties. Each state card tells you how many active jurisdictions that state has, and whether the sourcing override is for sales, use, or default. 
In this map detail view we can sort jurisdictions by active, inactive, or all. The buttons above those options are for the various actions we can take for jurisdictions. We can apply filters such as filtering by Nexus ID or effective date, add a new Nexus jurisdiction, view the history of modifications made to Nexus jurisdictions, import a CSV file of Nexus jurisdictions, or export a CSV file of the information listed here. The card for Iowa shows the 14 jurisdictions that I just added. Clicking on its card will take me to the details for those jurisdictions. It turns out that there are additional active jurisdictions that I want to add for Iowa. So I can click the Add button here to do that. I still don't want to turn on all jurisdictions, so I will select again to turn only some on. I want to add the three non-county jurisdictions that I skipped over before. Last time I clicked save at the bottom of the dialog, but this time since I'm near the top of the dialog, I'll use the check mark at the top to save and close. A message at the top of the screen confirms that I successfully added these jurisdictions, which are now visible at the top of the map details list for Iowa. But let's say that I want to edit a specific jurisdiction, like the city of Clarksville. All I need to do is click on that card. This opens the edit dialog for the city of Clarksville, where I can see the Nexus ID, country, state, and the editable fields for sourcing override, effective date, and end date. I can also view the history of revisions to this jurisdiction. There's a very brief summary of past changes here, but I can click to view the detailed history. This view shows all of the applied fields for this jurisdiction, when they were last changed, what changed, and who changed them. If for example, you were out of town and a colleague made changes for you, you could check this section to review what changes they made. So I'll try making a change to this particular jurisdiction, by altering the end date. Then saving it. We can see that the Nexus was updated successfully. Then if I scroll down and open that jurisdiction again and expand the history. We can see that it shows my change to the end date, what the change was, and when I made it. On this screen, you can also delete a jurisdiction if necessary. Just click on its card as we've been doing to make and review changes. In most cases you might just want to deactivate the jurisdiction, which you can do by changing the end date. But if for example you added a jurisdiction incorrectly and need to remove it, you can use the delete button. Just to be sure, I'm prompted to confirm the deletion. And after doing so, I receive a message that it was deleted successfully. This brings our overview of Nexus management to a close. I hope that this video has familiarized you with the various ways of working with Nexus jurisdictions. As with many features in SureTax, there are multiple ways of doing this so you can experiment and determine what works best for you. Thanks for watching our video on Nexus management in SureTax.